Hello everyone, thanks for joining this session. We will start in 5 minutes. Ok, my name is Dmitro, I am Solutions Architect at Starwind. Uh, the projects I, I'm been working on are Starwind Hybrid Cloud and Stretch Clustering. And today we will discuss how Starwind can help us make serving multiple locations less hectic. Ok, let's go! We are recording this session and you will get the link uh, to the offline version after the event. Feel free to submit your questions to the question box throughout the event. I will gladly answer them during the Q&A session. So today we will discuss when you may need stretch clusters, what is Starwind stretch cluster architecture and uh, what are its requirements. On top of that, uh, during the live demo I'll show you how Starwind stretch cluster with Hyper-E on the board uh, performs having 5 milliseconds latency and before we finish our session I will answer all your questions. So, before talking about why go stretch, let's take a look at the background and answer the questions of what is stretch cluster. Actually, it's either Hyper-V or VMware's cluster of two or more nodes running in different physical locations. The cluster storage is either synchronously or asynchronously replicated between the cluster nodes. So, why go for stretch cluster? To keep it straight for the availability and uptime. Any business needs its application, services and servers to be constantly up and running. You should be able to manage planet maintenance and be fully prepared for, to any disaster scenarios so the maintenance or the loss of the one of the sites does not affect the overall operations of the cluster. We need active active access to the data from multiple locations. Basically we need data mirrored um, the actual data at each side. One big reason to build stretch cluster is disaster recovery. Imagine a real natural disaster happens in city A, but thanks to application mirrored to um, city B, they are not affected and keep operating in their usual way. I believe you get the main idea and just not to bore you with a lot of words, wasting your time, let's look at how to build a stretch cluster with the help of Starwind, which will be that magic stick that replicates your data safely between the locations. First thing first, there are two follower strategies, Harbit and the node majority. Let's go with the Harbit follower strategy. It requires redundant Harbit channels to avoid the split brain and data corruption in the case of synchronization channel failure. The Harbit uses network channels for pinging, but not for the data transfer between the locations. If the data cannot be transferred through the synchronization channel, Starwind checks the availability of the second node through the alternative network interface and shuts down the partner of a H device on the second node. The second type of the follower strategy is node majority. Starwind requires a channel for the Harbit and synchronization. The main requirement for keeping the node operational is an active connection with more than a half of the cluster nodes. Calculation of the available partners is based on the votes. You need a third host, such as witness in the cloud, or main site, or even third node in the cluster. The last one, uh, by the way, requires no witness node in the case of a chain device replication between three nodes. For the both scenarios, the implementation of Starwind stretch cluster requires less than 25 milliseconds round-trip time network latency and fast network channel between the locations. We recommend uh, going with 10 gig network, however you can go with 1 gig or so. The hardware footprint starts from only one Starwind node per location. Ok, let's switch to the demo. So, this is not majority follower scenario. We have a two-node stretch cluster running a synchronously replicated HA device with a witness in AWS cloud. This is Starwind Management Console. I had created three HA devices. One is witness. It has been used as follower cluster quorum disk. 
and other two IHA devices are being presented to the cluster as available storage and configured as cluster shared volume. In case of VMware scenario, we configure them as shared data stores connected to the both nodes. As usual, once the devices are configured, they are available for the iSCSI connection via um, either Microsoft iSCSI Initiator or VMware iSCSI Software Adapter. Basically, I would like to demonstrate the multipassing policy used in Starwind Storage Cluster. It is set to a follower only that allows performing reads and writes using the local pairs of the Starwind HA device, while Starwind utilizes fast network channel for the synchronization purposes. For low latency and high speed channel, LISQ depths and even round robin are configured. Now I would like to ping nodes. And you see, it, in our case, we have network latency of about 10 to 5 milliseconds. To measure network bandwidth, I use a perf tool. Long story short, if I use a single stream, I would utilize about 50 megabits per second. But if I add some more streams, I can utilize the full bandwidth of the link, which is about 1 gig. Uh, with this being said, uh, Starwind synchronization channel um, is tweaked to utilize the link efficiently. So devices are connected and what is left is make them available in Disk Manager, initializing and formatting drives. Once that is done, you can add the storage to the cluster. So let's go to the Follower Cluster Manager. Once you add the Starwind storage, you can make it as cluster shared volumes. Now you can set up VMs to the cluster shared volumes and uh, once you have the production deployed, here comes the benefits of the stretch cluster. I would like to migrate a VM between nodes. Let's say one node needs some maintenance. This setup allows live migration between nodes to deal with a disaster and perform node maintenance without dropping down your production. Let's switch to the question box. Uh, one question from the Valeri. What is the witness role? Basically, it continuously checks the votes from the cluster nodes. If all nodes are online, we have three votes. If a vote was not received, witness marks a storage node as offline and uh, having two votes out of three, one from itself and another from active storing node, storage runs from the active node. The cluster comes offline only in case each storing host uh, has own vote only. Okay. But what if uh, the node failed? Basically, Starwind allows you to tolerate a node failure. So, the Starwind storage witness is online and as well as second locations. Let's connect to it. As you might see, the cluster shared volumes are up and running. As for VMs, um, basically it, in the case of Hyper-V, VMs will boot from the second node and run there. But if it was VMware cluster, you basically could benefit from using the vSphere fault tolerant feature. It provides continuous availability for mission critical virtual machine um, by creating and maintaining another identical VM that can be replicated in the event of the failover situation. In this case, you have no downtime at all. Um, the application is running all the time, no matter what happens.
and basically that's pretty much it. So let's start the Q&A session. I hope you have some interesting questions. Okay. A good question from Jeff. Um, does the Starwind run on the physical server or in VM in Hyper-V? Actually, Starwind um, installs natively on the Windows server. In case of VMware, we run either in the Windows Server VM or Linux-based virtual storage appliance. Okay. One more question. Um, are the system requirements and system performance equal uh, for Starwind running on Windows or Linux? Actually, yes. Starwind was ported to Linux, saving all the functionality and features. As for the stretch cluster requirements, just consider the flower strategy according to your network design, and that's it. Okay. Okay, another question. So, building a cluster, do I need Starwind installed and configured on each host? Jeff. Yes. Um, this is how it works. You install Starwind on a node, to second node, and uh, to witness if it's not majority. Um, license Starwind and you're ready to configure the storage. Or you can go either uh, having a trial or paid license and uh, let our engineers uh, do the job for you. Okay. Okay. Um, does the Starwind has Windows Core support? Yes. Um, just install and manage uh, the Starwind via PowerShell, Management Console on your Windows 10 machine, or via Web Console in your browser. Okay. Yes, Jeff. Um, anytime, let me know uh, if you need some assistance with Stretch Cluster and Starwind configuration. Okay. Is the sync interval between the configuration? Um, no, the Starwind performs read and write operations to storage um, rep storage replicated instantly. Okay. Let me see if there are other unanswered questions. Okay, no questions. Okay, great. So that's it, I believe. Thank you all for the joining the session. Um, try Starwind and yes, see you next time. Um, cheers!